in and you'll see us as well. We're going to get started in about one minute. And we'll start off with a nice easy warm up that everybody can do. Hopefully if you've been homeschooling or a bit bored, it's been raining over here in London. So um, it's been one of those days where everyone's stuck indoors anyway. So it'd be quite nice to get a little bit of energy out, get moving around a little bit, maybe learn a bit of tennis at the same time. So we're going to start in about one minute. So I said if you haven't just joined, if you only just joined in, there's a few things you need for the class. Uh, if you can find... A tennis racket, a mini tennis racket, the smaller the better because we're indoors, we don't want to break anything when we're playing. Uh, you could use a table tennis bat, that's a bit smaller, definitely more room to swing. Or if you don't want to use anything at all, if you haven't got your racket with you or you're a bit worried about breaking things, then imagine your hand is a racket and when you do your practice swings, you can just swing your hand and it'll make the same kind of movements as if you were playing tennis anyway. You also, for the class, you need, if you have got one, a balloon. If you haven't got a balloon, don't worry. Again, you can just try to improvise for this week. But the balloon is one of the things we can use inside to be able to help us with our coordination. So what our hands and our eyes are doing. It's nice and safe to play with a balloon and good fun. And then also we've got a sponge ball. But again, not everybody's got a sponge ball. So hopefully you might be able to order one online if you're going to follow the class. Sponge ball's a little bit safer. So if you are hitting it either against a wall or you're bouncing on the floor, it won't break anything. Uh, if you haven't got a sponge ball today, see if you can find a tennis ball. And we're going to do some nice safe exercises, so we're not going to be worried about breaking anything anyway. Okay, um, so it's four o'clock and time for our mini tennis at home class. If you're here in the background, that's Lulu. She might run in and nick our balls at any point, but hopefully she'll stay in her bed. This is Freddie. Give everybody away, Fred. Hello. Okay, if you guys have watched our at home videos before, you'll always know that I end up asking Freddie to join me. So he's my tennis partner for the class. Uh, he's a bit older than probably most of you guys who are trying to watch this. Uh, so Freddie's 12 and our class is aimed for players who are aged 3 to 8 really. But it doesn't matter if you're a bit older than that. You can always have some fun playing tennis and learning. Plus if you've got someone who's older to help someone who's younger, that'd be ideal. So if you've got an older brother who's like 9 or 10 and they want to help someone who's 3 or 4, that's going to be perfect for today's class. And if you haven't got a partner or an older brother, maybe ask your mum or your dad or your somebody, who, older sister or brother as well, who can help you. Because if you do these classes together, it's going to make it more fun. And also there's a couple of exercises we can definitely do, which are going to be better when we do them together. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is get warmed up. So every good tennis lesson starts with a warm up. And this is going to be no different. So what we're going to do, Lulu, you've got to go outside, on your bed, go, off you go, on your bed. OK, we're going to start off, we're going to pick our tennis racket up. And what we're going to do is... We're going to start off just doing some nice, easy warm-up exercises behind it. So I'm going to put my racket in front like that. I'll move just to the side. And the first exercise we're going to do is just jogging on the spot behind our racket. And when we do this, we're just going to try and transfer our weight from one side to the other. So I go to my right side, to my left side, and then I just get a little bit of bounce in that. And then what I'm also going to do is put my hands out in front. Okay, just like a tennis player. So if I was waiting for a ball to come towards me, I'm looking a little bit like I'm ready for my serve or ready for my forehand to be hit the next time. We'll just do a little bit more, a little bit more bounce in our step. Perfect. So we're just starting to get warmed up now, you guys. If you're just joining in, thanks very much for tuning in. This is our Women Park Tennis Academy mini tennis at home session. And we're just starting with our warm up. This is Freddie, I'm Steve. And we're going to be doing about 30 minutes or so of exercises that are suitable for mini tennis players aged about three to eight years old. Okay, Fred, I'm gonna bring you in here. Now, if you jump over the racket, so I get Freddie to do this one on his own. So he jumps from one side of his racket to the other, back to the other side, and then I'm gonna shadow him. So I'm gonna try and copy his movement. So if you're working with a partner, you're just jumping from side to side. You're trying to keep their movement the same as yours. So when he jumps, I jump. And then when I say switch, we've changed positions. You're my shadow. And now I'm jumping over my racket. Again, he's got to keep up with me. If I stop, he has to stop. And then we switch. Next one comes in. Again, I'm trying to keep up with him. So we're trying to keep as a shadow. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I missed that one too. Where are we going? Okay, always good. Ah, oh, switch. I'm better at being the person in the front. Lulu, out you go. On your bed. Off we go. She's stolen a sponge ball. Stop. Drop. Stop, switch, one more in, off we go. Stop. Good one. Stop. 
Oh, <laughs> Last one. Can we go? Stop. Perfect. Okay, right, great. So let's just move our racket to one side. We're going to do another exercise this time. Go, if you grab your racket up. Your Actually, let's pick our rackets up, guys. So grab your racket in your hands. And this time, we're going to have to do it. Just wait to the side for a sec, Fred. We're going to try and get our hands out in front. So you can see I've got my racket about an arm's width length in front of me. So I'm now in what we call our ready position. So you guys who play tennis all the time, you know what ready position looks like. I've got to get my feet nice and wide, and I've got to try and make sure my racket's out in front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow my stance and then widen it. Narrow my stance and then widen it. And I'm just going to try and do 10 of those. So we can count them out together. We start with our narrow stance and we go one, and then narrow again, two, Narrow again, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Perfect, Fred, it's your turn. Up you go. Fred, Fred, leave the dog, she'll get out in a second. Lulu, Fred. So, Fred, you've got to do ten of those. Off you go. So, narrow stance and then a split step in a ready position. So, first thing we want to do. Just get his hands out here, and then he's gonna narrow his stance, in with your feet, and then jump out. So split step, perfect, 10, go. One, try to keep the arms out in front. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and stop, perfect. Okay, Lulu, sit. Good girl, stay there. Good girl, right, off to the side for a second. Okay, last exercise we're gonna do. And this time, what we're going to try and do is lunge. We take our racket and we try to hold it out in front. So we're going to do it like this. And then I'm going to try and step my right foot forward. And I'm going to try to twist to the side. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to step my left foot forward. And I'm going to twist to the side. And again, I'm going to try and do five. And then Freddie's going to have a go. So step forward, balance. Twist to the side. And come back. Step forward. Twist to the side. Come back. That's two. Step forward, twist to the side, that's three. Step forward, twist to the side, four. And the last one, step forward, twist to the side. And come on, now your partner has a go. Freddie, you're in. Just gonna get the dog out for a sec. Freddie, in you go. It's your turn to twist. Let's just get Lulu. Out you come. Out, on your bed, on your bed, on your bed. Good girl. Uh, we're twisting ourselves. No, we've done that one. What we're trying to do, let's just line you up again. Okay, let's just watch again, just over to the side. So I take my racket out in front, I bring my right foot forward, I'm gonna try and bend my knees a little bit, and then just twist over to the other side, and then I'm gonna do the reverse. So when I go to the left, I'm gonna try and bring my racket over to the side. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay, Freddie's turn. So step forward, twist to the side, let the legs forward, perfect. And then move back, twist forward, perfect. And back, twist forward, Back, well done. Twist forward. Okay, can you just starting to wobble a little bit? So the reason we do this exercise is we just try to learn how to keep our balance in this position. So perhaps if you're super young, you just want to feel like you put your racket up and just do a tiny step easily. The way to make it more tricky is to switch hands. So I'll start off with my playing hand. So you guys think I'm left-handed, but actually the camera makes it the opposite. So I'm right-handed. I've got my racket in my right hand. And the aim is to do a nice, easy exercise we call twiddles, which is tapping the racket, the, ball, uh, the balloon on one side, switching sides of our racket and tapping it again. So I just tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, and I'm just trying to keep the balloon under control without it falling on the floor. Okay, and again, if you find that too easy, you change to the other side. So now I think I'm showing you right-handed, so this is my other hand. And again, I just tap it, switch, and each time I tap it, I try to use that other side of the racket. So easy exercise, one you've done in your classes lots before, but with a balloon indoors, one, we can always do it because we've got lots of time, and two, we've got no worries about the balloon breaking anything in our lounge or anything like that. Okay, Freddie, you're up. Here's the balloon. So use your strong hand first of all. Here he comes. Okay, perfect. So we've just got, again, racket up. The important thing we're going to do here, just a little bit of a, a, a bit of learning. So Freddie straight away put his hand with his palm of his hand on the back there. We want to try and get chopper grip, which is when we get our hand 
We feel if you just show that one, Freddie, look. You can see his hand there, the thumb and the forefinger on either side of the grip. So that means when he's changing, he's actually learning to use his wrist a little bit, which is gonna be a little bit better for the exercise. So if you can do that, have a try. If not, you can just hold it any way you feel comfortable. So one side of the racket and the other side. Try to do 10 taps. Each time you hit it, you hit it on a different side. Try to control it. Perfect. How many is that? Okay, count 10 more for me from there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, stop there. Great. Now, again, same thing. If you're not doing this one with a balloon and if you're just practicing turning your hand over, and again, with a partner, this one is a changing exercise. So if you haven't got a partner, if you're not working with somebody, just keep practicing this. Okay, and if you have got a little tennis ball, we could do that exercise the same way with our sponge ball. So we can just tap it up and when we feel comfortable, we can change it to the other side or we can change it every time we hit the ball. So the tennis ball is a little bit harder than the balloon because it comes down quicker onto the racket. So I recommend starting with the balloon and then trying to build up to your skills with your rackets, especially if you're in a small space. So our game we play together is two taps and switch. So I'm gonna do one, two, and then Freddie does the next two, one, two and then I go one two and then he does the next two one two and then one two one two good one two all we're doing is just trying to do the same skill those twiddles it's a hard one two one my little teammate two <laughs> we have to change each time two one two and then stop okay great we didn't drop the balloon at all it didn't get near the floor so we found that exercise quite easy. So this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it on our knees. So we have to just go down on the floor. We have to keep control of it. And off we go again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Same thing. A little bit nearer the floor. Keep our balance. Oop. Last couple. One, two, good skills. One, two, last one. Brilliant, okay, back up on our legs. So if we go down on our knees, we restrict our movement a little bit. So it means that we've got to be a bit more careful with our hands, which is really good practice for how we can use those skills and develop them for tennis. This time we'll play one last game. Okay, this time we're gonna make it a bit tricky. So we're gonna see if we can wait right until the balloon hits near the floor before we hit it. So I'm gonna try and hit mine up in the air, and I'm gonna wait right to the minute, and then I'm gonna try and hit it. Okay, all around of control. Wait till it hits near the floor, near the floor. So we have to wait, then we hit it. Good, wait, then we hit it. Good, oh. good, oh, and we've broken down. So the longer we leave it, the more tricky the skill is, but then we have a bit of fun trying to keep it up in the air. It's not allowed to hit the ground. If it hits the ground, you can play a life game where you lose a life. Good one, don't let it hit the floor. Good one, oh, up your head, hey. Good, right to the bottom, bend your knees, oh, hit the next run. Last one, oh. Good, good. Okay, so what we get when it goes low to the floor is we get a little lunging move, which is good for our legs. And, hang on a second. We also get a little bit of skill, which is trying to get the racket to come underneath the, uh, the object we're playing with. So in this case, if it's a balloon, we can get underneath it and push it up nice and high. Okay, um, we, while we've got the balloon, we'll do one more exercise with it. And this one is a twisting exercise to help us with our ready position. So I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm gonna put the balloon between my hands like this, and now I'm into my ready position. So you can see, I've managed to get the balloon just in between my arms, and I've got both hands connected on the racket, and I've got the balloon in between. And it's got a spare balloon as well. Okay, so if you guys set up, if you haven't got your balloon, don't worry, just try to get that shape that we're talking about. And what we're gonna do with this exercise is we're gonna do some rotation. So from here, we're gonna to try to turn, and back to the middle, turn, and back to the middle. And if you watch carefully, my shoulder on this side is gonna to point to the camera, and that way I know I've got all the way around, and that's a really good position for me to rotate into. And it's the opposite shoulder this time when I go the other side. So I'm gonna try and turn, and now I can see that shoulder pointed down towards you guys at home. And we're gonna try and do that for about 30 seconds. We do it slowly to start with, so we do it correctly. Nice and slow. Trying to get that shoulder to show, and then back again, turn, that shoulder to show, 
and one more time, turn, and on the other side as well, turn, great, now I can really feel that twist, and the balloon, by keeping the balloon there, it's helping me keep my shape, and it's making sure that that connection between my hands and my body, so when I turn my shoulders, I also feel it in my tummy, and I start to feel it in my legs, so I'm really making sure all my body is working. Okay, Freddie, let's set you up, bend your arms slightly, drop your hands down a bit, so again, if we just have a look, we've got Freddie's got the balloon in the middle. If you don't have a balloon, don't worry, I could take that away and you can still keep that space. But ideally, we want to try and keep it in there. Don't burst the balloon by squeezing it. And all we're trying to do is we're trying to turn, and he wants to see this shoulder when he turns this way. So turn to the side, other way. Perfect, stop, have a look in the camera. Okay, so he's looking over this front shoulder here. So now his left shoulder, you guys are looking at it, his right shoulder is pointed to the camera keeping the balloon in place, and then turn to the other side. And we're having a look for this shoulder. Excellent, one more time. Turn again, good. Okay, we're gonna do a few of those on your own, Freddie. So turn, and then back to the middle. Turn, go back to the middle. Just take a step backwards for me. Very good. Okay, one thing, just stop there for a second. One thing you'll definitely notice is Freddie is able to rotate even further than me. So he's a lot looser in his body. So um, it's really important we learn how to use that flexibility. We get all the way around. You can almost see when he's turning. If we do it again, guys, if you're doing it at home and you're watching your, your kids do it, if you turn and we go all the way around, we're looking almost past that shoulder. Look over your shoulder. Now we can see that he's looking in the right place, but his back's starting to show. So he's got a really good turn there. Okay, um, let's have a stop there for a second. So that was our warm up. We did some jumping around. We did a little bit of work with the balloon and a tappy game where we had to use our hands. We played a little bit of a game where it became a bit more tricky to do that, where we were lunging and moving our body downwards. I could definitely feel my legs have been doing some stuff. And then at the end there, we just did something quite slow where we just started to learn how our body might turn when we're starting to play tennis. So the next bit we're gonna do is we're gonna have a drink and then we're just gonna see if we can wave at a few people that are watching, and you guys can do the same thing. So we're gonna take like 30 seconds, one minute just to have a drink, and then we're gonna come back, and we're gonna talk about how we swing our racket a little bit. So for this bit, we're gonna need a bit of space to be able to practice that. So grab yourself a drink, thanks for joining in so far, and then we'll crack on again in about 30 seconds to one minute. Uh, Fred, here's your drink bottle. Who's, um, anyone watching? Can you wave to people? Better off come this side. Uh, let's have a quick look. Katie's watching. Hi, Katie. So, uh, Monty, Max, I hope you're playing nicely at home. Playing nicely means working together, not arguing about what you're doing. Okay, hopefully, you've got enough space to move around. Uh, but also, if you guys want to join in and do it as a family, you could try these exercises all over the weekend and keep practicing. So, that's really, really cool. Um, we've got a few other people from WPTA that are watching as well. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. If um, if you don't get a chance to watch this, if you're watching this on YouTube because we're going to record it and you watch it tomorrow and maybe you do it after school, then that's great too. But don't forget with all these things, if you can share it with people and then you can pass it on down the chain, then other people will get to watch it. Maybe there's some exercises. Do you want to just get Lulu for a second? Lulu, out you go. Out. Just close the door for her. Yeah. Lulu, out, out, out. Come. The dog wants to play tennis. Um, yeah, if you share it, um, if you enjoy the class and you think that other people would like it to share it and then hopefully it gets passed down the chain a bit more and more people can join in. Um, we're going to be doing it every Thursday at four o'clock. You don't have to be part of WPTA to take part. It's free. It's on Facebook Live. And so hopefully it's something to look forward to for your kids each week where they can progress their tennis a little bit. OK, uh, we're ready to go again. Fred, where's, there's your lid for your water bottle. You ready for the next bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so our next bit is more about swinging the racket. So this is quite simple. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to just go through three different strokes that we play in tennis. So if you guys are at home, and if I was the teacher in the class, I would say, does anybody know any names of any good strokes in tennis? So if you're at home and you're watching, do you know any good names of any strokes we play in tennis? Freddie, do you know any? Yes. Name me a stroke in tennis. Front stroke. Front stroke. Forward stroke. Forward, Forward stroke. stroke. My son <laughs> is the son of a tennis coach and he's come up with front stroke for one of the shots that he plays. 
He must have had hours and hours of tennis practice and he's giving me front stroke. It's not swimming. We're not doing front crawl. We're a bit confused. Maybe a little bit of homeschooling for Freddie needs a bit of work on it. So what is the name of the shot we play like this? Um, forward stroke. Forehand, Freddie. Forehand. <laughs> Freddie's been stuck at home for too long. He's forgotten what a forehand is. Have you guys at home forgotten what a forehand is? I hope not. It's only been a couple of weeks. So anyway, let's just say we have forgotten what a forehand is. We're going to remind ourselves that on our strongest side, so I'm a right-handed player, but you're seeing it left-handed. Okay, if I put my hand to the side and I swing on that side of my body, because the front of my hand is pointed forward, we're going to say we're playing a forehand. So we want the front to push forward and feel like we're playing that stroke. Now, we don't use our hand, but you guys can if you're practicing. But when we use our racket, the front side of the racket is here, and that's the side we're trying to play with. Okay, so what we're going to do, just because it's difficult to be able to learn any technique at home, we're just going to have some fun swinging the racket. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do five strokes, and I'm going to try to make a really easy position. So for you really young players at home, you know that if you get your arms out like this, or if your arms are like this sideways on, we call that the aeroplane position. So I've got one wing out to the side, the other wing out to the other side. Probably just stand on the side for me. And I'm now in my aeroplane position, which is a little bit sideways on, and it's nice and easy for me to be able to swing on my forehand side of my body. Now we're going to try and do five swings and we're going to try and go from our aeroplane position, so that's that one there, and we're going to try and see if we can do an aeroplane swing and we're going to catch the racket afterwards. So I'm going to start from that position and I'm going to swing and catch, that's one. And then I go back, swing and catch, that's two. From that position again, swing and catch, that's three. And four, and five. Okay, Freddie, you're up. Come and stand in for me. Okay. Let's do some front stroke. <laughs> okay, sideways on. So we need him to be in an aeroplane position. This point points at the camera. This hand points at the camera. This hand points at the camera. Perfect, this hand goes at the back. Oh, it's like Freddie's never played tennis before. He's forgotten everything. Okay, so we're in that position. If he was paying attention to his teacher, then know exactly what he's got to do. I'm going to give him some tips. He needs five swings, but let's see if he can remember what he has to do when he's doing the swing. And you guys at home, when you're doing it, you might be able to beat Freddie in this one. So five swings, off you go. Count them out. Be careful because there's a light above you. So just a gentle swing. Two. Count them for yourself. Four. Four. Five. Okay, stop. Now, what were you thinking about as you were swinging the racket? Finish. Okay, he had a big nose finish. So that's not quite what we're practicing. So we're just pushing to one side for a sec. So we're going to do it again. I don't know if you remembered when you saw me do my demonstration, but I asked you to start as an aeroplane and then swing, and then your racket had to catch in the other hand on the other side of your body. So if you look at my hand here, I'm pointing towards you guys, and then I swing, and I'm trying to get my racket to come up and catch. Now, I don't catch with my racket here because I want my racket to go past my body and as I start to turn, which is what we did with the balloon at the beginning, we see the racket come up to our shoulders. So if you look at my catching position, I go from my aeroplane and I keep turning my body and that's where I catch the racket. It's about level with my shoulders. So that's a good position to finish your stroke. So again, well, I'll just do three and I'll let Freddie come in and do five more. So from my aeroplane, I swing and I catch, and I try and catch up above my shoulders. Aeroplane to catch, and one more. Aeroplane to catch, and that's my swinging position. So, off you go, Freddie. Let's see if you can do that. Okay. So remember what you've seen, take that racket back. There's his aeroplane, he's got his arms pointed in opposite directions, and he swings and he catches, good. And then we get that hand up nice and high up here, off you go. Ready and turn and catch. Great, we're catching it up here. Nice, one more time. Let's do five. So that's two, three, four, and five. Great, okay, good. So what was the name of the stroke we've just been practicing? Aeroplane. What was the name of the stroke we were just practicing? Uh, front hand. What was the name of the stroke? Tell everybody at home, just quickly, then they're watching. Front hand. We were practicing what shot? There is no front hand in tennis. Forehand. 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 Off to the side. He's there. We got him in there. I think, to be honest, I think he's doing it like that on purpose. I think he knows it's called a forehand. It's just because 
the whole well on camera and everything else. So uh, the next shot, Freddie, what is the next shot you can remember in tennis? Backhand. Yeah, backhand. So backhand is on the opposite side. You guys, again, if you're watching, you know what a backhand is. You practice it if you come to our classes each week. We definitely love this shot. It's a really cool shot because we have two hands on the racket a lot of the time, unless you're Roger Federer, and then you have a beautiful one-handed backhand. But for today, because we're young players, we always learn to start with two hands on the racket. So if you remember at the beginning, we had a balloon here and we had our hands on our racket. So this is gonna help us with our turn, which we definitely need to do when we become good players on our backhand. And just to get close to the camera, I've got two hands on the racket. I've got my strong hand on the bottom, remember? And then I've got my other hand sitting on top. Because I'm using a really small racket, those hands almost sit underneath the strings. So that's okay, we don't mind that at all because we're in a, a small space and we don't wanna break anything in our lounge. So here we go. We're going to try and do the opposite side. So this time I'm coming to this side of the lounge and then I'm trying to put my hands together and we're going to have a slightly different thing to think about. Instead of thinking of our catching position, we're going to try and see if we can see the bottom of our racket at the end of the swing. And we'll see that once we've finished it over our shoulder. So if you look at this position here, we say that's like having a camera pointed at the camera. And then that way you can see that your racket's in the perfect position after you've hit the ball. We're not hitting a ball, we're just practicing our strokes. So again, I want to try and start sideways on. If I was an aeroplane, I'd be like this, but this time, this wing of the aeroplane is gonna be on the racket. So I've got both hands in, and you can see this shoulder is pointing towards you guys, and my back is starting to show. So I'm really twisting at the beginning of the shot, and then I'm gonna go up to imagine I'm hitting the ball, and our big thing to remember is have we got the camera pointed at the camera? So I'm finishing in a good position because I can see the bottom of the racket I'm playing with. So from this position to this position. And each time I swing, I'm trying to remember to see if that is in the right place. One more time, and that's a good swing. I can see the bottom of the racket after I finish the stroke. Right, Freddie, what's it called? Hmm? What's it called? Back Tell everybody. Backhand. We're practicing backhand. Okay, sideways on. Right Two hands on the other way around. So you're right-handed, so back in on the other side. Oh! Yeah, here we go. Look. Give this bit of one. It has been a while. Okay, he's sideways on. So a bit this way a bit, so just wrap, line yourself up. Great. So he's got his right hand on the bottom, he's got his left hand on top. His right hand is his strongest hand. Again, it looks to you guys like left-handed because we're in reverse. And what are you thinking about after you've swung the racket? I'll make sure the camera's pointed at the camera. Perfect. So can we do it really slowly because don't forget there's a light above you. So swing. And then have a look. Can you see the camera pointed at the camera? Yes. Sort of. I mean, he ended up with his hands kind of by his chin there. So we probably want them a bit away, so there's a bit of space. So do one more swing and see if you can make it look the right way. So stop. Again, there's a good position. He's got a bit of freedom in here. And again, that's what we're looking for, the bottom of the racket as the camera to the camera. Okay, five swings for me. You count them out. One. Not too quick. Two. to keep quiet for five swings. Okay, so not bad. So we start to think about where the racket might finish. Hopefully, if you're playing with your mum or your dad or maybe a big brother, big sister, you found some space to do that exercise because we don't want to swing and go crazy and then knock things off that are going to be valuable or something like that, something we might miss if we break it. So make sure when you do these exercises that you're finding lots of space. And if you haven't got much space, use a really small object or if you want to just put your hands together, you can try to learn to do those exercises with just your hands. But we're tennis players, so we kind of want a tennis racket in our hands if you can. Okay, now the last one, we're going to make that a little bit more of an energy exercise. So we start like this, and we swing one, change position, swing two, change position, and then we're just going to do 30 seconds of just trying to remember our positions and trying to get nice swings in place. So I've done about seven or eight there trying to move my feet. As I start to get going, I start to think I'm repeating my shots and they look the same all the time, rather than feeling like I'm having to think about where it finishes. It just happens because I'm doing it in a repetitive way. So if you guys start to think about things like that, the more you do it, the more it becomes a habit, something you do all the time. If you don't practice at all, 
you have to keep thinking about what you're doing and then it's much harder to keep doing it. So if we just do a little bit of repetitive practice all the time, we're going to be able to do it without really worrying about whether we're doing it right or wrong. We're just enjoying doing a nice good move. Fred, you're in. One right. forehand, one backhand. Remember where that swing finishes? And as you get going, can we just swap rackets? Mm -hmm. Do that one, that way you definitely won't hit. So forehand first, aeroplane. Remember where you finish, now backhand. Remember where you finish. Good, concentrate on the finish to start with. Switch sides. Wait. Switch sides to backhand, yeah, that's right. And then that, there you go. And then switch again. Right, now he's got that hanging, but he's finishing in a good position now. Just go for it, like one and then the other one. One and then the other one. Good, make it nice and dynamic, good. That's a big word, we don't want to necessarily use huge words like dynamic, but what he's doing is he's doing it with more energy now. He's got his feet moving, he's got his racket moving a bit quicker. He's not thinking about where it finishes, he's thinking more about the idea of can he get some energy into what he's doing. If he starts going too quick, he might get dizzy, or he might get out of energy, or he might fall over, so we don't want to go crazy, otherwise we fall off the screen. So we can just definitely build up a little bit of energy into our exercise and feel like we're starting to become a professional tennis player. So I'm trying to get my forehands and my backhands one at a time, I'm really trying to feel like those swings are starting to look good ones. Okay, Fred, you're up, come on, last couple, he's off the bench. Go for it, one forehand, one backhand, go. Good, ah, stop, stop, so he's gone too fast and then it starts to look a bit shaky and a bit wobbly, so slow down again, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, now listen to this, stand to the side for a second. So this is the last version of our swing shapes. We'll practice this every week because it's so important. But this time we're gonna try and have three numbers and each number means you go faster. So number one, I concentrate on doing my swings quite slowly. And number two, I go a little bit faster. And then number three, oh, whoo, whoo. Oh, I'm going super fast. That's my fastest gear, and I'm trying to really swing my racket fast. Again, before you do this game, make sure it's safe. We don't want anyone going crazy and then feeling like they fall on the floor. So if you're tiny, tiny, you can do a nice fast swing, but you've got to make sure you've got space around you or that your mum or dad is helping you. So you can do that swing fast, nice and fast. Number three, we go faster. And then that's what we're going to do. So you're going to hear me call the numbers out. Freddie's up. So we're going to start off number one, everybody. So nice swings, off you go. Number one, just make sure you finish them. Number two, a little bit faster. Number three, super fast. Number two, slow down. Number three, super fast. Make the swings still. Oh, oh no, sit the sofa. Number one, slow it down, slow it down. Make good swings, make sure they finish in the right place. Number three, super fast. Good, okay, and stop, and stop. Okay, and calm down. Okay, our number three, we start to lose the swings a little bit, but we have a lot of fun because we're going a bit crazy, so that's all good. Um, look, we're just gonna have a quick drink again. We've gone to half past four now, so we've been doing half an hour of tennis. Hopefully you're having a good time. Definitely learning some things about our strokes. We've already now remembered it's a forehand, not front hand, which is really good. And we've done some swing shapes and we've done some other bits and pieces. So our last bit we're gonna do, just for the last five or 10 minutes, is we're gonna play a couple of games. But before we do that, we need some water and then we can finish our class off when we come back. So take 30 seconds off, have a quick drink and then come back. Ready, have a drink. I already have this, oh, You can practice your keepy uppers. With the blue. Yeah. It's a tennis class, have the racket. True. Okay, all right guys. So I've had a drink of water and I'm ready for the last little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play a scoring game. So again, if you guys have got one, a balloon's great for this. It's the safest game we can play. And for you guys who are super young, you're like three-year-olds or four-year-olds at home practicing, then the balloon's definitely a really good skill to try because um, we can control the game a bit easier. If you don't have a balloon, then a tennis ball's fine, but try to remember, you can buy, I'll talk to you guys about where you can buy some kit after we finish the class, but a soft ball like this is really good or a sponge ball is even better. 
And remember, try not to be hitting the ball, we're not whacking the ball around our indoor environments. We're trying to make sure we are aware of what things can get broken. Otherwise, your parents are going to be texting me saying, why on earth didn't you tell my son or daughter to be careful in the tennis club? So we don't want to get in trouble with mum or dad. We've got to make sure we have safe, uh, safety in mind when we're doing our class. Right, now Fred, this is the game. Okay, we're going to play a little bit like we were before, so we'll lose that balloon. Okay, now the first game we're going to play with our volley is a volleying game. So volley guys, if you remember, uh, I can ask you at home if you know what a volley is. So the difference between a forehand and a backhand and a volley is one crucial thing because we do a forehand volley and a backhand no volley. Bounce. But we call it a volley because no bounce. something's not allowed to bounce. So if I do this, if the balloon hits the floor and then I hit it, then it doesn't become a volley anymore. I'm only volleying it when I'm hitting the ball before it hits the floor. So the balloon is the same thing. We can volley a balloon or we can bounce and then hit the balloon. So for this game, it's a volley game. And what we're trying to do is we're gonna to try to see how many volleys we can do together in the time that the coach sets. So the time we're gonna give ourselves is gonna be one minute. Okay, so we have one minute. You'll hear me say, ready, steady, go. And we have to try to volley the ball backwards and forwards as many times as we can inside a minute. So we're going to score and count our score as we go along. You guys can play with us. If you're playing on your own, you can try to do as many of these as you can, which is still volleys. We keep the balloon on the strings and you have to count with us. So after one minute, we'll say stop and then we'll call our scores out. And then we're going to have another try and see if we can beat our score. So uh, we're looking at our clock. Fred, we're going to start when the clock gets to nine. So we're starting in five seconds. Our minute's going to start. Make sure you stand far enough apart. Three, two, one, go. I'm going to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Mind this. <laughs> that hit the floor. We're on nineteen. Ready? Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Oh, quick. Hit the floor. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. 32, 33, 34, 5, 36, 37, 38, 30, off, chest, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, oh, hit the floor, quick, 46, 47, 38, 49, and stop, okay, we've got to one minute, so we got to 50, the big 5-0, 50, good score. good score, we hit the floor, how many times did the balloon hit the floor? Four. Four times. So if we play this game and we play it by Steve's rules, you have to try and deduct the times that the balloon hit the floor from your overall score. So if you can remember that at home, we scored 50 inside our minute and we hit the floor four times. So our total score is 46. 46. So we've scored 46 inside our minute. So we can decide, are we going to try and stop the balloon from hitting the floor to do a better score? Or are we going to try and go faster and get more hits in our next minute? So we're going to try and see how we get on. Remember, add your score up. Keep it to yourselves. You can tell me at the end if you put it on the comments what your best score was. And again, we're going to try and beat our score. So we've got to get 47 volleys to beat our previous mm. score inside our minute. So we're going to start in three, two, one, go. One. Oh. Oh. No. One. Six. Seven. 52 will give ourselves because we probably have a bit more time. How many times did the balloon hit the floor? Three times. Twice. 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 So 52 minus 2 is? It's 49. <laughs> 50. <laughs> it's 50. So time. our best score 51. was 50 inside the time. I actually was a bit rubbish at keeping the time. So 
Uh, I reckon we'd have probably got a better score than that. Now, if we're playing these games and we try one thing and then we try and beat it over time, we can work out a couple of ideas how we can do it. How do you think we beat our score that time? What we were we went better faster, at? faster, faster. Yeah, I, we went faster with our volleys. So we were trying to maybe hit the ball to each other a little bit quicker than we were the first time. So that's obviously a really good way of trying to get a slightly bigger score. Okay, so that's our little game of balloon volley. And it's really, really good. Again, if you're watching this class and you think, oh, I didn't have a balloon, I would like to play that game. You can just go around to your local shops when you're getting things, buy a pack of balloons, blow them up, and then you can play these games at home. If you don't want to use your rackets, I used to play this game with my sister at home, and we used to basically try and keep the balloon up in the air, put your racket on the side, and we used to basically try and play a little game where we had to hit the balloon to each other, and we just tried to keep the balloon off the floor, and if you hit the balloon on the floor, like that, oh, if I couldn't get it before I hit the floor, I'd lose a life or I'd lose a point. And you can start to play a little bit of balloon tennis in your lounge, which is a great game. So um, that gets us to the end of our class today. We managed to do 40 minutes of tennis. So this is our mini tennis at home class. Uh, if you've been watching it live, double thumbs up. Thanks very much for your support. Really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed it, then perhaps you might comment a little bit and also share it with some friends. And if you'd like to do it every week, we're gonna try and do it every Thursday at four o'clock, where we'll do 40 minutes of these kind of exercises, where you can follow me, I'm Coach Steve, but I might get Freddie along as well, I'm sure he'll be here every week. And we'll try and do some different things, but also we'll be working on some of the basics that help us with our tennis. So today we've done forehands and we've done backhands, we've used our balloons for volleys, and we've done some warm up, some other stuff as well. So really hope you've enjoyed it. And um, for next week's class, I just I brought a couple of things. Um, watch out for a sec, Fred. So for next week's class, we're probably going to use one of these, which is a scarf or a, um, a juggle square and a bean bag. So uh, what I'm going to try and do on our WPTA Facebook page, I'm going to put some links to a company called zig.com. Fred, can you just turn that off for a second? So on zig.com you can buy all this kind of stuff. So you can buy bean bags and scarves and you can buy sponge balls. You can buy all your mini tennis equipment. But there's loads of other cool stuff that you might want to invest in for the next four or five weeks if you're stuck at home. Where your kids who love playing ball games or love playing their tennis, uh, perhaps you can set up some things inside the house which will help them with their coordination, their balance and also a little bit to do with their tennis technique. So next week I might have a few other ideas of what we can buy from zig and we'll bring them into the class. And if you've managed to pick them up, you can join the class and you have all the right equipment and you'll be ready to go for a really fun tennis at home class. Um, that is it for today. So, uh, Freddie, say bye to everybody. Bye, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in. Really appreciate all your time and support for coming along. Please share the videos if you've watched it. Don't forget we're on WPTA, which is Wimbledon Park, at Wimbledon Park Tennis. That's our Facebook page. Hope to see you next week uh, and have a great week. Take care and be safe, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.